Let's tie a an iridescent caddis nymph. We begin with a TMC 206 BL. This happens to be a size 14. I'll tie them anywhere down from 18, 18 up to 12. Thread I'm using is Uni 17 aught Trico thread in white. And tie it in behind the eye and bring it back clear down into the bend of the hook because I've got a big um, abdomen that I need to tie in on there. And it's also where I tie in all my materials. Now I'm locking it in there because I need it to anchor really well. What I have here is some D-rib in large. And I'm going to cut a, a slight taper at the end of it so that it, it tapers pro properly at the end of the fly. And I just use a razor blade, as you can see. I suggest you use a really sharp blade because that's the only way you're going to get that nice taper. Now I'll tie it in at the bottom. And then I'll cut the other end. Now I don't bring my thread all the way up to the front because I've got to cut that other taper at the other end and I don't want to slice it off. But I do need to make sure that it's tied in properly. Now you'll see I'm going to use the top of the hook to help me create that taper. See how far it goes up over the top? Once again I just slide my blade underneath and create that taper for the front end. I'm going to lash it down now. Now I'm going to take a couple pieces of ostrich, uh, no, peacock pearl that have been dyed chartreuse, and this is going to be my gills. And I'm just going to uh, use a little pots weave to uh, twist it up and attach it to the bottom of the fly in the abdomen section. But this is the last thing I'll do, and so it's obviously the first thing I put on, one of the first things I put on. Once again, I need to anchor it really well. I don't want it pulling out or anything. Now, I have a piece of latex rubber, and it's actually, it's the latex actually comes from the cuff portion of a surgical glove. And these are the really cheapy gloves. <laughs> But it works really well for doing um, these bodies. You can build up real well. I'm going to actually, you're going to see me use C, um, CA glue or super glue on it because it turns it translucent. I'll cut a little taper in it also, so it doesn't build up too quickly at the very beginning. See that taper? 
and just tie it in by the point. You can see I'm using those extra large whip finishers so I can get into the depth of the fly, into the back end of the fly. Now I here have a piece here of uh, uni, uni mylar. And this is the medium stuff and it's in the pearl color. And I've cut a taper in it also. And it's going to form my ribs and also give me the iridescence that I'm looking for. Once again, those large uh, whip finishers so I can tie back into the depth of the fly. Now I'm going to set that bobbin of thread aside and I won't use it. I'm going to take another bobbin and tie it at the front to tie off my materials. But I'm going to use that bobbin of thread, that extra bobbin that I left back there to actually create my, le my gills. Now, I'm going to take some, uh, some of that super glue and put just a tiny bit. By the way, that's super glue in a bottle with an 18, 18 gauge needle that does not clog. Now I'm going to wrap it with uh, overlapping wraps. Now I'm going to put a little dab on that of super glue on the actual latex and that's where I get my translucency and then I can build it up to get that little fat okole and then bring in and taper it and I just can vary the amount of, um, of pressure or how much I pull on that latex and I overlap it quite a bit by at least half and then I increase the tension as I bring it up to the front I knew where the fat section that I wanted to be I've got, still got super glue and it broke on me. It dissolved it actually. But it actually broke right where I needed it to break. So you need to work quickly with it. Now I just need to trap it down. Now I'm going to take that uh, mylar and wrap it. I won't butt it up with sections, I'll space it out. I would touch more uh, super glue to help keep the uh, mylar in place. I guess you could completely cover it in the wrap, but I don't want to do that. I want to still show some, some segmentation. Unfortunately, with this mylar, it, it gives it a little bit of an olive glow. And it really, I think it looks more like the gas bubble that these caddis have as they uh, transform. Now I'm going to tie it off and cut that bobbin off. Because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to use the other bobbin to, to, to create those gills. Now what I'm going to do is take a hackle pliers and capture those two strands of ostrich hurl and twist them. And what I'm trying to do is, you know how you twist something? Remember as a kid you used to take your shoelaces or something and you would take those two pieces of twine and you would turn them until they turned into a knot and then they would also actually fold in over on themselves? Well I'm going to use that action, that folding over, to create my legs. 
Now you got to go real. You got to be a little more sensitive on this portion of it because you'll break those that ostrich run. And even though I tied them in at the very beginning, you can tie in two more without a problem. You just tie it underneath. And see how it's knotting on each other? That's what I want. Because I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that to create those legs and that bundle underneath. Now what I'm doing is I go around once, capture a bit, have the uh, ostrich hurl actually bundle up on me and then capture it to the underside of the uh, abdomen. And this is actually a mod, it's, it's actually the pot sweep, but I changed it up a bit. It just gave, I was looking for a way to create legs underneath my scud, and I came up with this. I actually saw Mike Tucker's video for his scud, and I use the te same technique, but I use it a little bit differently to get this. So you see, I've twisted it, I get that bundle, I relax it, it bundles up on me, and then I attach it to the bottom of the fly. And I'll just do that all the way up to the front of the fly. Now I'm not worried too much about getting directly underneath it because can always, after I get, tie this off, I can take those that also turn and push it so it's more directly underneath the abdomen of the fly. You see, once again, I get that, got those twists, and I got that nice little bundle. I just le ease it up and then just tie up up underneath. Now I've done, I'm done tying those gills in, and I'm gonna trim off, trim and tie off. Now I've got some medallion sheeting and this thing is probably a quarter of an inch wide to uh, five sixteenths. And it's going to be my um, um, wing case. See I'm taking that ostrich hurl and just pushing it underneath with my bodkin. Oh, I forgot. I'm going to uh, <laughs> coat the abdomen section because it's easier to do it right now. It's just UV nonsense. And it's to protect the fly. The abdomen section also protect that tinsel. You get that nice glow. And that translucency. What's nice about the UV nonsense, it flows. It's self-leveling. It actually goes where it needs to go, all by itself. I may not nudge it a little bit with the tip of the uh, nozzle of the UV resin, but it actually goes where it needs to most of the time. i just hit it with my uh, torch real quick. Now I've gone to about a third of the way back. And I'm going to take that medallion sheeting now and use it as my wing case.
it's a fairly wide piece of medallion cheese, mainly because it's going to cup down my legs, my legs, as well as that thorax area. Now I've got a piece of peacock. This is in black. And just wrap it. Now, I don't want to build up too much uh, the top of this um, caddis too much. So I'm going to take my, my um, thread zapper and burn off the top portion of that peacock. I've got my peacock in black, tie it off. And I do it in different colors also. I like it in red a lot of the times. The peacock, that is. Got my little thread zapper. You can get these over at Joann's as well as Michael's for 10 bucks. Man, they're cheap. And they're worth it. Now, I've got a piece of mallard flank in medium done. And I'm going to cut the tip portion in the middle so that it splits naturally. And that's what I'm going to use for, for my legs. Now I actually tie it in right behind the eye of the hook. Now I'll pull my medallion sheeting into that split so, it's, so I've got it aligned properly and then I also know that I've got the right amount of legs on each side. Now I'll make a couple slight wraps and then I'll tug on the stem to adjust the length of those legs. And I like how those legs veil the uh, back section. And in the water, it really looks extremely buggy, as well as plays peekaboo with the uh, ostrich, the chartreuse arch ostrich underneath. Now I'm pulling it back to reveal the eye so I don't gum it up too bad and crowd that eye, which I'm going to do anyway, but I'll just burn that out. So I've cut it short so I can tie it off. And use my nippers to trim. Now that's how these come really handy because they tie in really tight. I still have some there so I'm going to burn that off with a bodkin as well as with my thread zapper. And I'm also going to get a marker to clo color that white thread. At this point, the fly is actually done, but I need to do some things to protect the fly a little better. So I'm going to put a coating of UV knot sense on top of that th wing case. That I'm just putting just a dot of super glue to nail down the whip finish. Now I'm heating up the bodkin. The bodkin is a pin vise, and the needle itself is a dart, the dart portion of a blowgun dart. And what I like about it is I like a really sharp bodkin all the time, so it allows me to switch it out. And this is a really thin, light bodkin, so, and it's got, it's all knurled, so it grips really well. And those darts are really cheap. I mean, there's something like five, 10 bucks for a hundred of them. So I can afford to switch them out anytime that I want to. Now I've got a little bit of UV resin, going to build that uh, wing case section up just a bit. This is UV nonsense. It's what I usually, you know, all these resins are out nowadays, but when this UV nonsense came out and I was introduced to it by uh, Bill Heaton, 
and people were using it to tie flies, it was a godsend. Because it dries, quote, cures instantly with a UV light instead of having to wait forever with epoxy and using drums and stuff, rotating drums and such. So now I'm just trying to get a little bit of refraction. So I put a little bit of extra UV resin and I got the bubble and I'm gonna smoosh it around to where I really want it. I didn't even do that. There we go. Just hit it with my torch. But it gives me that nice little bubble on top. Now I'm gonna go back in and just touch up the eye and burn off those extra fibers. I'd already hit it earlier with the bobkin, so I know that I can thread my thread. It just looks a little bit better with some of that excess being trimmed away. And that's my iridescent caddis.